Today I'm going to revisit my burning image loading screen. It's been about four years since I put out that tutorial and a lot about how my code has changed and I wanted to come back to it, show a much better way of doing it. This is not going to be for beginners. If you want the beginner friendly tutorial, I will link that in the description below, but we are going to be glancing over inheritance and event-based programming today. We're going to be using the free dissolve edge shader. We're also going to be using lean tween. The tweening library is going to give us access to a whole bunch of different animation curves. I will be leaving that in the description. So let's get started. This is our starting scene. Uh, I did some stuff in advance, but to go over it quickly, we have our canvas group, a background image, some text, and a button, as well as a animation. So this animation is used at the start of the scene and it just fades out. Then I have my loading screen prefab. And all this is, is a canvas group with a black background and the image we want to burn. Oh, and this is also just an empty prefab right now, but we'll be using this later. And another important thing is we need to make sure that the UI scale mode is set to scale with screen size, reference resolution set to 1920 by 1080, and the match slider uh, set to 0 0.5. So what this is going to do is it's going to make it so that when we squash and stretch the screen, everything will be lined up and stay consistent create a document that's going to show us what we're going to be doing today. We're going to create a fade controller script that's going to be responsible for fading a value from 0 to 1 or 1 to 0. We're then going to have a fade controller with target script that inherits from the fade controller script. And this is going to allow us to dynamically change the target so that it can't move past a specific value. This is going to be important for the visual representation of how much we've loaded so far. We then have the fade by speed with target script that inherits the fade controller with target and the fade by time that inherits the fade controller. The fade controller script is going to have unity events that these top three scripts are going to subscribe to, which is going to give us a lot more control. Now that that's out of the way, let's create our first script. I created a folder called fade scripts, and in here I'm going to create a fade controller. So we're gonna get rid of the update and start function. We don't need them. And we're also going to make this a abstract class. Let's create two abstract functions, fade in and fade out. An abstract basically just means that whatever class inherits from fade controller, has to have the actual implementation for fade in and fade out. So here we're just declaring these functions, but we're not actually giving them a body. We'll now create a private float called current value and three unity events, one called on start, on value change, and on complete. Oh, and make sure to include the messing references. Unity events, if you don't know, are basically delegates that you can set up in the editor. They are super useful. How this works is multiple things can subscribe to an event. Uh, kind of like subscribing to a YouTube video. And then when you invoke this event, all the subscribers are fired off and run their functions. Let's now create our update value function. This will take in a float and we're going to set the current value to the value. And then we're going to invoke the on value change event. We'll now create two constants, one called fade out value, which will equal to zero and one called fade in value, which will equal to one. Create two public functions, one called fade in immediate and one called fade out immediate. All this will do is update the value immediately to either fade in or fade out. And lastly, we'll create a protected getter that returns the current value. So now we're going to create the fade by time script. We can delete the update and start function. Instead of mono behavior, we're going to inherit from the fade controller script. We'll inherit the missing members. And in this script, we're going to be implementing the tweening library. So let's create two new variables, a lean tween type named ease type and a private int called ID. We're just gonna make it equal to negative one. Now we'll fill in the fade in function. We're going to call lean tween dot value pass in the current game object, our current value, the fade in target value. And then for speed, we're going to lerp it between speed and zero by the current value. How lerp works is this third value here is a range between zero and one. The closer to one it is, the more it's going to favor the second value. And the closer to zero it is, the more it favors the first value. We're just doing this because let's say the current value right now is equal to 0 0.5. We don't want it to take one second to get from 0 0.5 to one. We want it to take 0.5 seconds. Now we're going to take in some additional functions. We're gonna call set ease 
and pass in the ease type which is going to give us access to a whole range of different types of animation curves. There's a really convenient cheat sheet website called easings.net. I'll link it in the description below, but the website basically just visually displays all the different easing types, so it's super helpful to have on hand. We'll set on update to the update value, and this just means that every single time this updates, it will also run this function. When it completes, we'll invoke our onComplete event. We also want to invoke our onStart event. Now I want to add .id at the end of this so that we can track the tween, then set our local ID to equal to this tween ID value. Now I want to check to see if the lean tween is already running our current tween. If it is, we're just going to cancel it and start a new one. We also want to invoke our onStart event. Since we're basically going to be doing the exact same thing in the fade out function as we did in the fade in function, let's create a function called start tween, pass in the target value, min time, and max time. Now we can remove all of this and replace it with the function we just created. Pass in the fade in value, speed, and zero. And for the fade out function, we'll pass in the fade out value, zero, and speed. That's it for this one. Now let's create the fade controller with target script. And again, we can get rid of the start and update functions make it inherit from the fade controller. We're going to create a protective float called current target and a public function called set target, which will set the current target to the passed in target. Let's now create a private bool called use unscaled time. And if you don't know, the serialized field attribute is used to expose private variables in the editor. We'll now create a protected float called get delta time. And this is just going to return the time scale we want to use. If you don't know what a ternary operator is, it's basically an if else statement. So this is our if statement here. If use unscaled time is true, then it's going to return time.unscaled delta time. And if it's false, then we're going to return time.delta time. Now we can create our last fade script, call it fade by speed with target, remove the update and start functions, inherit the fade controller with target script, inherit the missing members. Create three new variables, two floats called end value and speed, and one bool called is running. Create a coroutine called move towards target coroutine. So let's fill in the fade in function. We're going to set our speed to the passed in speed, set the end value to equal to the fade in value, and we're going to set the current target to equal to the current value. Make sure that if the coroutine is already running, we're not going to just start it again going to do the exact same thing for the fade out function, but instead of copying and pasting all of this, we're going to create a new function that's going to handle it for us. We'll also invoke the onStart event in here. So now we can replace this with start fade in and pass in the fade in value. And then for the fade out function, we'll pass in the fade out value. Now let's start filling out our coroutine. We're going to set is running to true when it starts and then set it to false when it ends, as well as invoke the on complete event. We'll now call the update value function and pass in the move towards value. So for current, we're going to pass in the current value. For target, we're going to pass in the current target value. And for speed, we're going to pass in the get delta time times speed. We're also going to include an if statement. We only want this to run when the current value does not equal the target value. Now for the while loop, we only want it to run when the current value does not equal the end value or the current value does not equal the current target. Let's make this a little bit more readable and extract this method. Call it current value uncomplete. And that's it for this one. I know that was kind of a lot, but now we get to bring everything together. So let's start with the fade in effect for the canvas group. Create a new script, call it set canvas group alpha, remove the start and update function, add a serialized field that takes in a canvas group, and we're going to call it canvas group, and create a function called set value that's going to take in a float. We're then going to set the canvas group alpha equal to the value. We're going to make sure to clamp it between 0 and 1. We'll add the set canvas group alpha in the fade by time script. On the on value change event, we can add a new listener by pressing this plus button and selecting the set value function. Select your ease type. We're just going to be using linear today and also pass in the missing reference. So one issue we currently have is if we set the burn image material to the burn material, then when we fade out, it's also going to create the burn effect. To get around this, I'm going to put this back to none and then create a new script, call it change image material, move the start and update function. I'm 
I'm going to create two serialized fields, one for image and another for the material. And we need to import the Unity UI directory and then create a function called change material which just sets the image material to the new material on the loading screen prefab object. Add the change image material, pass in the burn image and our burn material. So once this fades in, we're going to change the material. So we'll pass in our object, select the function, and that's it. Let's create a new script called set shader float. Remove the update and start function. We're going to reference our material and our shader variable name, as well as a private int called progress ID. We then create an awake function that sets the progress ID to the shader property ID with the passed in shader variable name. Now, if you don't know where we got this underscore progress name from, all you need to do is select your material, click these three dots here, select edit shader, and then find the name of whatever variable you want to edit in here. In my case, it's underscore progress. Now with that done, let's create a public function called set value. And we just take our material, call set float, pass in the progress ID and the new value. Because our fade controller fades between a value of zero and one, and because we're editing a shader variable, we don't really know if this variable is going to be between zero and one, or like 200 and 300, we don't know. So we're going to create a vector two called min max lerp value, and then create a function called set value lerp. This is going to lerp the progress by the min value, max value using the passed in range value. Now in the burn fade empty game object, we'll add the fade by speed with target script and the set shader float script. Pass in the missing material and set up the hook for it. So now we can create our load scene async script, delete the update and start functions. And this script is going to be a little bit similar to our fade controller script. So we're going to create three Unity events called on start, on value change, and on complete, as well as a private pool called load on complete. And the most important variable, the async operation. We're now going to create a function called start scene load. We're going to import the scene manager directory. And for our two parameters, we're going to pass in an int for the scene index and a bool to load on complete. From here, we set our load on complete to the passed in load on complete, set our async operation to equal to the scene manager dot load async and pass in our build number. This is really important. We need to set the async operation allow scene activation to false. This is going to make it so the scene doesn't just load right away once it's finished. Let's create our coroutine, call it async coroutine. And then for our while check, we're going to check to see if our async operation progress divided by 0.9 does not equal one. So it's a little bit weird, but for some reason, the progress goes between zero and 0 0.9. So it's dividing it by 0 0.9 makes it a whole number for us. And then once it's one, that means it's complete. But this isn't very readable. It's kind of, a, you know, it takes you a hot minute to figure out. So let's extract this method, call it get async progress. And then let's take this statement here, extract it again and call it get async complete. Now it's super readable. Within the while loop, we're going to invoke the on value change, pass in the get async progress function. Then once it's complete, we're going to call the on value change again, but this time we're going to pass in a value of one. So this just ensures that whoever's listening to this event, it gets told to actually finish. Otherwise it would just either invoke it like a zero or whatever value it left off here. And uh, you don't want that. And then we're going to check to see if load on complete is true. And if it is true, then we're going to load the new scene. We're not going to be making use of this in today's tutorial, but maybe that's something you would want for whatever you're working on. And then we're also going to add the on start event, then actually call our coroutine. Lastly, we're going to create a function called allow scene activation. This is going to set allow scene activation to true, which gives it permission to take us to the next scene. So now all that's left is to create our loading screen manager script, remove the update and start functions. Now we're going to create some fields. Reference the fade controller, 
and we're going to call it loading screen fade. Then we'll have a float called loading screen fade in time. And we're also going to have the header attribute. If you don't know what that does, it allows you to group and label your variables for organization. We'll now create two more variables. One will reference the load async and we'll call load scene async, a private int that will keep track of the scene we're going to load and then create the variables for the load progress visual, call it fade controller target, and a float called target fade speed multiplier, along with three booleans, one called async complete, target complete, and is loading. Create a function called load new scene and pass in an int for the scene to load. We're going to check to see if we're already loading, if we are, we're going to break out of this function. We don't want to start another load sequence. We then set is loading to true. Set the scene to load to the passed in int variable and then start fading in the loading screen. Create a function called reset values. This is going to make sure that all the values are set up properly just in case you or someone else accidentally change the values. This way we know that everything's going to be set up properly no matter what and then place that within the load new scene function. Create a function called add listeners. We're now going to reference the loading screen fade and add a listener to the on complete event. Create a function called on load fade in complete. So once the loading screen has finished fading in, we're going to tell the burnt image that it can start fading out in the load scene to start loading. Let's add a new listener to the load scene async for the on value change event. We're going to be changing the fade target value. Add a new listener to the load scene async for the on value change event. This function is going to change the burn fade target, but we have a problem. So load async goes from a value of zero to one, but we need the value to go from one to zero for the fade out. So what we're going to do is create a vector two, call it async target lerp, and then set it to start at one and then go to zero. Now that we've created that variable, create a new function called on async progress change, passing in a float variable, we're calling it new value. We then set the fade controller's target between the min and max value. So it's pretty much going to be doing the opposite here. We'll now add two new listeners to the oncomplete event, one for the fade controller target and another for the load scene async. Let's create those two functions now. So when the async is complete, we'll set async complete to true. And when the fade target is complete, we'll set the target complete to true. Now create a function to check to see if both of these bools are true. So if they're both true, we're going to give the async operation permission to load the next scene. So now let's set up that function, pass in the async complete bool, and then in this function, we'll pass in the target complete bool. Oh, and don't forget to add the add listeners function in here. So now on the loading screen prefab, we can add the loading screen manager and the load scene async. Pass in your references the canvas group alpha to zero, set up the button. So on the on click event of the button, we're going to pass in the loading screen game object, reference the loading screen manager and select the load new scene function. And if you don't know how to add a scene to your build index, go to build setting and click add open scene. And I think that's it. Nice. So I know that was kind of a lot and you may be asking yourself like, why is this method better? In my original tutorial, I had everything all in one script. And while that's like easy and convenient for beginners, you'll find that if you need to change something, it is so much more work than it needs to be. Like, let's say I wanted to change the burn fade to a slider instead. All I would really need to do is create a new script that handles the slider float variable and that's pretty much it and then pass it in. And now along with that, it's not just limited to fading the canvas group in and out. It can also be used to fade colors in and out. It can fade like anything. So we're not like limited and it's decoupled, meaning that if we make changes to the script, it's not just going to break everything in your project and wreck havoc. So it's one of those things where it's a lot of planning and work at the beginning, but it saves you so much time and convenience later on. So let me know if you liked the video or if you have anything you want me to cover. And yeah, that's it. See ya.